the year is 1950. That's when Alan Turing, commonly regarded as the father of computer science and natural language processing, proposed a way of dealing with the question of whether machines can think. You may have heard of it as the Turing test. Initially called the imitation game, it measures a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior that matches or surpasses that of a human. The task involved understanding and writing back a natural language, effectively measuring the ability of a machine to fool humans into believing they're talking with a real person. This video will go over the weird and surprising evolution of natural language processing. We look at why it took so long to see any real progress and how it was believed almost solved 70 years ago. Some of the best methods used before the era of machine learning and how the field was unexpectedly revolutionized, exploding with amazing systems that can understand over 100 languages at once, write articles on their own and answer questions. It all started back in 1947, when way ahead of his time, Turing made the earliest known mention of computer intelligence and seeded the idea of machines meaningfully interacting with humans. For a long time, NLP techniques were rudimentary. They basically were collections of rules and dictionary tables, achieving the simple tasks and cheating on the big ones. In 1954, the Georgetown experiment was an important demonstration of machine translation. 60 sentences were translated from Russian to English. On the face of it, it seems like the authors made a huge breakthrough, even claiming that machine translation would be sold in five years. Like most things, it turned out that translation was a lot more complicated than originally thought. After the initial experiment, progress started slowing down dramatically. And needless to say, so did funding. Things remained quiet for a while. In the 60s, MIT made ELISA, a chatbot designed to give ambiguous answers that created the illusion of intelligence. Also, some statistical methods have had a glimpse of success, especially in the early 2000s when the web was growing and access to huge amounts of data became easier. It may come as a slight surprise that computers are so bad at understanding language. After all, programming languages are still the most powerful way to talk to a machine. Unsurprisingly though, compared to the structured nature of programming languages, human language is a nightmare. It is easy to overlook the complexity and inconsistencies of human speech. The reason we haven't cracked human language in such a long time, not even today, and the main drawback of symbolic and statistical methods was that humans still needed to transform the data such that a computer can make sense of it. Computers can't really work with words. Computers work with numbers, and that is especially important for neural networks. That being said, finding a meaningful way to transform words into numbers proved to be a great challenge. Let's jump forward a few years and look at how techniques evolved from working decently to even surpassing humans in some tasks. The bag of words model might be the best name in NLP, because it works as simple as it sounds. To represent the sentence as numbers, you basically break out all the words, put them in a bag, and count them. The resulting counts are what the computer will look at when trying to make sense of your sentence. You can already see problems arising. No matter the order in which the words appear in the sentence, inside the bag, they look the same. So two different sentences can look the same for our poor silicon friends. The next fancier approach at tackling this representation are word embeddings. The idea is simple. Take all the words and put them in a room. Similar words, or those that often appear together, are next to each other in that room. So fly should be closer to bee and mosquito. That makes great sense. Until you remember that languages recycle words, because fly also makes sense near plane and pilot. And that's one of the easy ones. What about rose and rose? The problem of classical word embeddings is that of polysemantism. Some words simply have multiple meanings and trying to encompass all of them in a single representation won't do the trick. Some of the most common tasks that required advanced word representation and deep neuralness to solve include translation and summarization, answering questions and chatbots, and recognizing entities in sentences, such as person names, locations, or even job positions. Solving those problems required a way to grasp the order and context of words, not simply their individual meaning. Now begins the practical era of dealing with sequences. The first notable neural networks that successfully tackled NLP problems were the recurrent neural networks and their more sophisticated cousin, the long short-term memory nets. These architectures were a glorified way of writing loops using math, and as such, their idea hovered around even since the 70s. However, their practical time to shine was around 2014, when they really started to solve the real-world problems we previously talked about. These models were bittersweet. On one hand, they were considered magical because of their power, yet they oftentimes lacked the robustness and simplicity needed for real-world application. They were difficult to train, having to do all the work sequentially, and they were quite forgetful on longer sentences. 
Due to the way the math behind worked, by the time they got to the end of the sentence, they forgot the beginning. Fast forward to 2018, and that's when LLP really got exciting. Google released BERT, a machine learning model based on the Transformers architecture. In 2019, Google publicly announced that it is using BERT to improve its search results, and by 2020, it was leveraging BERT in almost all English queries. Transformers proved to be great at dealing with context-sensitive texts, modeling longer sequences by using a mechanism that imitates human attention. They were easier to train because they could process sentences in parallel, and as of 2022, are a great success in natural language processing, beating any other technique in almost any task. In some of them, they are even surpassing humans. Big names such as NVIDIA's Megatron and OpenAI's GPT-3 are based on this architecture, and nowadays they are even used for speech synthesis and image processing. This has been a really short history of natural language processing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos covering the best of machine learning and data science. Also, please leave a comment if what you'd like to see me explain next time.